May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God. Amen. Please be seated. I have to tell you, I'm tired. And when I say I'm tired, I don't mean I'm tired because I didn't get enough sleep last night or because I did it, overdid it in the chores of Saturday. When I say I'm tired, I mean there is an exhaustion in my soul. The events of this past year have brought a weariness that sinks deep down in my bones. And I would imagine that when you sit still, you feel it too. I'm really tired of COVID. I'm tired of not being able to shake hands and to give hugs. I'm tired of wearing masks and then having to deal with them as they get caught up in your microphone. I'm tired of the division in our country. I'm tired that we so quickly have learned to call neighbors enemies. Being from South Louisiana, I'm tired of hurricanes. And I think I'm most of all tired of waiting for things to get better. There's a weariness that comes to us in times like this. And then when you pile all of the regular stress of life, the kids, the marriages, the work, everything else, the finances, when you put all of that on top of this this deep weariness, it seems overwhelming. The gospel today was about people who have grown weary. It's the story of some bridesmaids who were waiting for their bridegroom. The way it all worked in that day was that the marriage would have been arranged possibly many years earlier, as a social contract between two families. And when the appointed day arrived, the bridegroom and his family and his people would get up and leave their home and then go to the bride's house, her village, and there would be a grand celebration there. And then after that celebration, the bridegroom would take the bride and they would walk together back to his house, to his village where she would officially join his family and there would be more party. So the story today is of that time before the bridegroom comes to the bride's house to pick her up and to celebrate there. In a time when they didn't have clocks and when lives weren't run by schedule, they just waited. But in the parable as Jesus tells it, the waiting continued. And they waited and they waited. And in the story, even till midnight, and the bridegroom hadn't shown up. The celebration could not begin. And the bridesmaids were weary. Some of them weren't prepared, and they ran out of oil for their lamps, so that when the bridegroom finally came, they missed it. And honestly, as I think about this story and where I might fit in, I, I think sometimes I'm one of the foolish bridesmaids who wasn't prepared, and I feel like I'm out of oil. It's hard to wait for God to step in. It's hard to wait for things to get better when they just don't seem to. It's hard when the days are dark. It's hard when hope somehow runs out. And the message of the parable is that be ready because the bridegroom is not far off. In fact, God is not distant. 
And even though it seems like God is not coming in and making it right, God is very near. And the God of light and love is also the God of darkness. The God of times like these. Because it's in the darkness that so often we are able to grow. And it's in the darkness that God can reach in. The, gospel, uh, the reading from Amos today was a, a time when the prophet told the people they were waiting for the day of the Lord. Just like the bridesmaids, they were waiting for God to come in and make things right. And Amos is challenging them and telling them, you need to know that God is not just in the deliverance. But the day of God is also the darkness. Because it is in the darkness where we often meet God. And while God sometimes comes like the bright rising sun in the morning, often God comes as a whisper in the darkness. It is in the darkness where the facade of our egos can fall. And we can entertain truth in a new way. It's in the darkness that the hardness of our hearts can become broken. So that freshness, softness can come. It's in the darkness so often that God works. And so today, my friends, as it seems like God may be far off and we are like those bridesmaids just waiting for things to get better, take assurance in that God is still here. God is still working and God is active because it is in the darkness that the work of God is often accomplished. It's amazing that how often spiritual things don't feel very spiritual. Often it's not a great revelation, a great relief. It is a solemn, slow smoldering of truth that we begin to accept. So take heart, my friends. The God of light and love is here in the darkness with us. And the encouragement of this day is to take care, to be ready. Look to yourselves and look to your neighbors to stay in the darkness until the bridegroom comes. Take time to look to yourself. Take time to take care. Take time to look to your mind and to your spirit and to your bodies. Take time and intention to settle your mind, to make decisions, to think on things that are beautiful and holy, to fill your mind with gratitude, because gratitude gives space for hope. Take time to think on love. Often our presiding bishop, when he talks about love, he, he talks about love being a choice and not a feeling. As you attend to your minds, take time to think on love, to make the choice to look at yourself with love, with a grace-filled humility. Check yourself. Let your thoughts be of beauty and wonder instead of just running around with worry and stress. Attend to yourselves, attend to your minds, attend to your thoughts, attend to your spirits. Make space for your spirits to breathe. In times like this, sometimes it's just hard to find the strength to nurture our own spirits. But our spirits must breathe. 
they must be tended to like a gardener tends to a garden. Take time to nurture your spirits. Take time to let your spirits breathe. The word for spirit in, in the Greek of the New Testament is the same word as breath. It requires intention and space. We breathe. Do something creative. Not to show anyone necessarily, not to, to put on exhibit, but just for you. Because when we do something creative, it gives space for those things inside us that we can't quite name and don't really realize are present to make their way out. It is the exhaling of our spirits. Take time to write, to journal, not for anyone else, just for you. Because it is an exhaling of the spirit. Take time to do something you've never done before. Try new art. Make a collage. Do something that is creative so that your spirit can breathe. Take time to attend to your spirit. It's hard. As so many of our regular spiritual practices are not there or are different, we must be intentional. To take care of our minds and to take care of our spirits. And take care of our bodies. The stress we know occurs in our brains as we run around with all kinds of thoughts. The stress we feel in our spirit, it ultimately takes root within our bodies. And we feel the physical weariness of it all. Take care. Tend to your bodies. Get some exercise. Go out and walk in these beautiful fall days. Do something to let that stress that just builds up within our physical being to release it. Do something different. Tend to your bodies. Pay attention to the things that are raised, rising up in your daily activities, the good and the bad. It's easy in times like these to let things like food and drink that are treats to become crutches. It's easy to lean on things that don't truly produce wholeness within us. So take time, check yourself, consider what is going on in your body, and tend to it. That is the work of God in our lives. As we tend to our minds and our spirits and our bodies, that is the work of God before us. That is us trimming our lamps and being ready and sensitive to what God is up to, even in these dark days into ourselves and in the same way we must tend to each other the parables of Jesus are often complicated and a little hard to interpret scholars debate about the best way to interpret them and one of the things that hits me about the parable that we read this day and certainly one of the things we might miss but that would have been evident to the first hearers of this parable was the relationship between these bridemaids that grow weary in the wait. You see, these ten bridesmaids in the story, they would have known each other very well. They would have been from the same village. They would have grown up together. They would have spent hours together each day as they tended to their chores together, as they made bread together, as they walked to get water from the well together. Their relationship would have been so much more than just an acquaintance. They would have been like sisters. And in the honor-based society of that day, a society which stressed the necessity of hospitality 
The story that Jesus tells was awkward and, and not realistic. And perhaps the thing that would have stood out to this story in the original hearers was, well, what do you mean they didn't share their oil? What kind of person wouldn't share their oil? And, and if there really wasn't enough oil, then they would have grabbed the other's hand and let them walk in light with their lamp. They would have shared the light of their lamp. What do you mean they let them out there by themselves? As Jesus tells this story, a part that we might miss is the necessity in these dark days of waiting, of leaning on each other. And as we take note of ourselves and take care of ourselves, we must take care of each other. It is necessary. We're not meant to walk this journey alone. Look to your neighbor, the one you haven't called in a while, check on him. Look to your family members and realize that even those that are frustrating and irritating to you are living in the same weariness that you are. And if you're here today, you're tired, you think, you know what, I'm one of those bridesmaids that just doesn't have any oil left, then seek out someone else. Look to your neighbor, look to your friend. If you're out of oil, find someone that has some. And if they don't have any, then find someone that, that can just provide some light to walk through the journey. Take care of each other. It is the call of the gospel on our lives. It is the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand and that we are to love not only God but each other. Take care, because God is a God of light and love, but God is God of the darkness as well. And God is here, God is now. And if you don't know where to turn to a neighbor, I invite you to turn to someone here at St. Luke's. There's someone for you, and if you're a guest with us, either here in person or online, reach out. There are people who want to share the light with you, to just walk with you through these dark days. Tend to yourselves and tend to your neighbors. That is the work of God in these days. In the name of the Father and the Son.